Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's weekly energy boost. I am so excited to be here with you. Actually, we're releasing this week's episode a day early so as to allow everyone to take advantage of the full impact and power of this week's energy, as we've been talking about in the last few weeks. The full moon of the month of Aries is one of the most powerful days of the year. This entire week supports every person on the planet, regardless of their awareness, to release the baggage, to detach from the walls and the barriers between us and our fullest potential, the maximum light that we came here to reveal. And so this week we're talking about um, how to be a light in this world, to find our unique ability. And to that end, um, I've invited to join us for this week's episode, Yehuda Ashkenazi, who you may remember from uh, both the summer and uh, I think we did an episode in October, two of the most downloaded episodes in the history of Weekly Energy Boost with Yehuda's Sacred Sounds Meditation at the end of the episode. There could not be a more perfect week to detach ourselves from the logic and the rationale of the human mind to allow the energy that's flowing freely through the universe to take over and assist us to revealing more of our limitless potential. So weekly energy boost is every week, a seven day spiritual weather forecast where we provide our listeners with the most powerful and practical tools to navigate the coming seven days. We do that by tapping into the wisdom and tools of Kabbalah and sharing not only those wisdom and tools, but also stories and experiences so that our listeners can use that wisdom and those tools every week of the year, any week of their lives. And because of the power of this week, we wanted to make sure you get an extra day in for this consciousness and for this meditation. And Yehuda is going to uh, lead us there. So thank you, Yehuda, for being with me this Sunday morning. Thank we, you for having me. <laughs> so we, we've been talking about, and, and this is something that I, I put into my daily meditations throughout this month, actually even before this month, because I know through the teachings of the Kabbalist and through my experience as well, that the whole month before this cosmic window that we call Pesach or Passover, the whole month before is really showing us where our work is, where to focus the um, that mindset of leave this behind. It doesn't serve me anymore. A lot of the things we talked about in the last few episodes are around uh, thoughts, words, and actions that don't serve me. Maybe they served me in the past, or they provide some sort of defense mechanism for the ego, for for self-preservation, but we no longer need them and we want to let them go. And the universe is set up that way to show us what we can leave behind specifically in this week of Pesach. So I think our listeners would love to hear from you how can we use our own process to better understand the blockages and the barriers and how to leave them behind? So um, I would like to share with the, um, something that Michael Berg shared actually um, in the past uh, week or so, two weeks. The difference between the time of uh, the preparation and the actual day of Rosh Hashanah and the time of uh, Pesach, Passover, the time that we are approaching now. And uh, one of the secrets that, that he mentioned, it is that Rosh Hashanah, it is the time at the soul level of a birth, giving birth to a new vessel, to a new consciousness, potentially, obviously. We all know with all the preparations that we, we're doing in the month of Elul, prior to Rosh Hashanah, the month of Virgo, looking inside, recognizing whatever it is that we need to work on spiritually and to change and to transform and hopefully coming fully ready for the two days that, as we speak a lot about, determine the entire year 
And here we come six months later to the time of Passover. And what spiritually is really happening in Passover? So looking back in the past six months, from the time of the birth of the new consciousness of the new vessel individually and collectively, Passover is giving us the opportunity, as Michael shared, for renewal, for renewal. So looking into our, into our lives, the tendency by default to all of us, fortunately, unfortunately, this is the, the, the direction and the, the path that what we truly need to do it is to pay attention of how much do we really utilize the energy that we drew and we received at the time of Rosh Hashanah and how much do we operate from the old self, the old program. Passover, it's that powerful among many other gifts that we can receive. It is to tap back into that new vessel that was activated at the seed level at the time of Rosh Hashanah. Going back into that choice, into that decision, into that light that we awakened six months ago and really activate all of this consciousness and all of this energy um, that manifest like a fuel for the next six months till the next Rosh Hashanah. And how can we use that energy or consciously or unconsciously? Some of our listeners six months ago had no idea that that download was available, that we could make that those choices. How do we uncover our unique gifts, our unique abilities in general, regardless of you know the, the unique opportunity that we have this week to dig deeper and reveal even more? What are some tips or insights you can share with our listeners about uncovering our unique abilities? So among many of the, the tools and, and directions that we can take, my recommendation always in this time and any other time, it is going deeper, going deeper internally, internally. When we approaching a moment of a greater revelation, an opportunity to tap into greater light, the, the nature it is that also the, the type of the challenges we will face also will become kind of bigger. At least it will feel I'm dealing with more pressure, with more stress, I'm dealing with more um, stuff in life that can manifest as um, emotions, feelings, thoughts um, that not necessarily supporting me in the direction that I desire, going deeper internally, asking my own self each day how much I'm in direction of making all of this noise around me a bit, a bit lower just this volume of the noise around me. How much is the voice internally of my soul, the true navigation system that each one of us have inside of ourselves? How much do I go in the direction to make it much louder? Everything begins with intention. Many times we want to know, so what, what can I do in order to do that? There are many things we can do, however, we always begin with the intention. Intention, it is something that I encourage all of us to awaken every day, every day. So going back into Rosh Hashanah and whatever energy any of us uh, was downloading and, or, or being conscious, unconscious of it, one of the, the basic uh, instructions spiritually that Ravash, like the founder of the center, is giving us in the teachings of Ten Luminous Emanation, it is realizing that anything that is under the umbrella of spirituality doesn't fall under the category of time. 
So in one hand, we know the timeline and different energies that entering into the universe and the tools the Kabbalah is giving us to tap into them. In the other hand, we see that time from spiritual perspective is completely an illusion. Meaning that even if I didn't know exactly six months ago what's going on energetically, today I can wake up and I can set a very powerful intention to be in a direction, be in a path, like a spiritual goal, before even knowing what can I do in order to achieve it, having a clear vision that more I'm capable to tune into the voice internally of my soul, more I will be able to be directed with the divine guidance, not just with the thoughts that might come up in my mind or, again, as I mentioned before, old, my old self, self that bring the old desires or different ideas or different opinions. The intention each day as we wake up to receive divine guidance. What, what do I really want today and each day of my life, each day of the year, each day of the coming week? What do I really want? I begin each day by asking for divine guidance. Divine guidance requires any of us to be willing to let go of any of our own desires that might not be aligned with what my soul should be doing in this coming day or this coming week or this coming month and, and so on. Letting go of my own desires, being willing to let go of them and inviting divine guidance, something much bigger than what I can even imagine by myself. This is the way I would go. For me, it's also the, the process or the journey of opening up myself to that divine guidance. A big part of it for me was also realizing how influence, how easily influenced I am by everyone and everything around me. I noticed uh, at a certain point, thanks to the help of uh, of our teacher, Karen Berg, that one of my favorite words, whether I was aware of it or not, was should. And the, the reality of thinking I should, this is how it should be, I should know better, I should want this, I should be there, I'm here, what's wrong? Realizing that so much of the, the soundtrack that was playing in my mind, even in a spiritual sense, guiding me toward goals, uh, influencing people, being meaning none of it was negative, but it was very externally driven. And the moment that I became aware of that and was able to tune more inward, which if you're like me and you listen to, you read a lot of books, you listen to a lot of people, it's, it's one of the most difficult things to rebuild that listening muscle so that you can still take in guidance, wisdom, information, and check, like you said, to see if it's in alignment with that divine spark within me. You know, the many of us, I think, wait for divine guidance to come from an external source as well. And to realize that there is this quiet, still, some, for some people, it's a voice, for some people, it's simply a knowing some people feel it physically. Some people might hear a sound or it might come to them in a, in a, in an auditory form. But to know that it's not something external. And sometimes the hardest part of the journey is to clear out that external noise and really stay focused on that quiet, I'm going to use the word voice, but it's not really the right word, that knowing, that understanding that is always there, that's always running there. And and we've talked in different episodes about angels and, and guides and different things that we can, different tools, different um, avenues that we can access. I, I believe that that's also a part of, 
of why the sacred sounds meditations are so powerful is because it helps us clear out the unnecessary mental chatter, the self-critic, the, the, the voices that interfere, well-meaning voices, by the way. We're not talking about somebody or, or someone trying to manipulate or, or some evil intention. It's simply a product of being a soul in a human body, that that noise is there. And to, to really be focused on clearing out that noise, whether the noise is historical, we've been, this is how we were raised, this is what we were taught, or if it's some pressure that we have, that we, a story that we generated about the way things should be, or maybe there's a timeline that we're being driven by and we're not meeting those goals or those deadlines the way that we should or we think we should. And I feel like doing these meditations, which is not always, you know, I think I, I've shared in previous episodes, I had a lot of resistance to meditation initially. And for me, that was a huge sign that it was something really important for me to develop a connection to because I knew my body didn't want me to embrace it. It was really important in the, in the, in an illogical way for me to be connected to it. Um, maybe we can, before we get into the meditation itself, I would love to hear from you a little bit about the, the importance of, <laughs> I'm going to say it in a funny way, but like disconnecting from the logic, the judgment, the, you know, even reading about other people's spiritual journeys or taking lessons from the Kabbalists, how do we identify or tap into that, um, you know, what, what's the best way that we can quiet the noise so that we can be deeply tuned into what's in alignment for us and the next steps in, in revealing our potential? So I want, first of all, to apologize um, to our audience of not necessarily being so practical about your question. Okay. Um, uh, we have other guests who are practical. We're here to hear from you. Okay, good. <laughs> so um, I know by default, I've been teaching um, over 24 years, and by default, the natural state of the mind to all of us um, we connect with things that make sense to us. One of the things I've learned from our teachers, the Raven Karen, Raven Karen Berg, it is 90% of the time what makes sense, not necessarily connected to the light. And what doesn't make sense, it is connected to the light. So if by default my mind is being pulled, being stimulated, I feel I understand, I feel attraction to certain thing that makes sense to me. Not necessarily it will be something that will help me to achieve the next phase of my soul transformation. So, so back into, into your, your question. So not being practical about it at the moment, and then we will do the meditation that this is one of the most practical practices uh, to practice achieving those states of mind to move from the intellect into much deeper state that exists within all of us the nature of our brain the nature of our the system that we're living by physically, not only spiritually, and we know that everything in the physical follows spiritual laws, but the nature, it will be always to bring each one of us back into the familiar space, meaning that if my mind at the moment, 85% works with the intellect logical system, there will be 10, 15% of moments that I will experience something that don't, that does, doesn't fall under the, the path of my intellect and, and logic. And some of it, I will be able to feel the truth in, in it. 
something that I heard, something that I experienced that makes me feel different, makes me feel um, in another uh, state of experience, makes me feel good, makes me feel more connected to truth, makes me feel being in a space of where there is no judgment, where there is love, the light of the creator. The, ten the tendency is that it will take a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, that I will go back into the old self, into the old program, back into the intellect, back into the, the logic. So this kind of a process or idea of homeostasis, that everything will pull me back into the old familiar state of thinking, of perception, of my spiritual work, my physical work, my interaction with my wife, with my kids, with the world, going back into the same individual that I was before, certain level of experience that allowed me to feel different, and eventually going back to be the same like I was before the experience. To be able to break through, to be able to manifest transformation that lasts for ever, that it is not an, a transformation that I feel, and then unfortunately later on going back into the old ways, it takes going back into what I said every day to set up my intention. Second, when I find a way, and for me, meditation, it is a big part. Studying wisdom, it's another part. So we can find different practical ways that helping us to achieve those states. But the consistency and the practice, it is a crucial uh, steps in allowing the transformation to be kind of fully accomplished, to help me to move to another phase. And it doesn't mean that I achieved the, the complete transformation, but if I moved from using my intellect side 80% of the time of my life, and after three, six months of practicing with intention and tools like the meditation into 75%, 5% difference make a huge difference in the way I experience my life, the way that I feel about myself, the way I feel about others, the way that my mind perceives different challenges I'm going through, the way I'm capable to tap into the gifts that I have inside of me. So the transformation is gradual. So in one hand, not expecting full transformation because of certain practice that I do, in other hand, knowing that if I'm not consistent with a certain, whatever practice that works for each one of us to achieve certain level of change internally, without consistency, it doesn't accumulate enough power to make the transformation happen. So going back into the intention and I'm adding the consistency of certain practice the same like you're going to the gym and you're not expecting to feel or to look different uh, in the next two weeks just because of one practice. The same thing, it goes spiritually. And what's fascinating, it is that getting into even the, the structure of the physical brain with all the more than 100 billion neurons in, in, in our brain and the pathways and the neurotransmitters and knowing that the moment that you you practice and you make something consistent and especially when it comes into spiritual level it starts to develop and to help you physically to be able to to tap into another level of perception you allow another level of energy that already as you mentioned before elisheva exists inside of you to become more awakened more accessible more available in the end of the day, it is all about accessing those energies that already exist inside of you. And I want Yehuda, thank you for that. I, I want to call attention to something you said 
and connect it to how we opened up this week's episode, right? Every week we try to give our listeners consciousness and tools that are related to the week. And when you were here, I think it was in October, um, we set a very sp specific intention with that meditation, which again, even though we connected it to that specific week of the year between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, where transformation is so much more easily accessible, we focused on opening our heart to connect to that already developed and existing spark within each one of us. This week, we really, the, the gates are open or the, the universe has really created the possibility for limitless transformation, limitless evolution, or I would even say illogical growth and change in a relatively short period of time, that which could take us months in any other or years uh, under any other conditions, the universe is really supporting us to do illogical, radical change. And for that reason, we wanted to invite everybody to develop this practice this week. The more, I, I think one of the beautiful things about a meditation, a, a sacred sounds experience like this combined with the cosmic window is that it creates or it amplifies, I would say, it amplifies the impact of the meditation and the intention infinitely. And so in a minute, I'm going to turn the mic over to Yehuda. You can already begin to get comfortable. If you're listening now for the first time, you can grab a blindfold. And maybe if you're listening in the car, you want to pause and wait until you can sit comfortably or lay down and, and listen with earphones or AirPods for the ultimate experience. The goal is again to combine wisdom and tools with the energy of this week. And by the way, it, you could be listening to this in December or August. It doesn't really matter. But we, because as our teacher Rob Berg used to say, the vault is open, right? You can grab as much energy as you can, this energy of freedom, of releasing the chains that are holding us back, of silencing the inner critic the ego, the opponent voice, anything that's standing between us and the revelation and expression of our, our fullest potential. So that's really the, the, my intention for reserving this week to have Yehuda on the episode, on the podcast and to share this experience with as many people as possible so that not only individually we can experience a quantum leap in our own journeys and in the our own individual revelation of our unique gifts but that the world will create will, will experience because of our work a critical mass of shift of transformation of elevation so that not only those of us who are listening right now can experience it but all of the souls who are connected to us will experience a shift toward toward the light toward the light within toward the light in the world and, and inside everyone in the world, and we will experience dramatic and radical change on the planet as well. So with that intention, I'm going to remind everybody, you can listen to the meditation as a standalone episode. After you hear the full episode, we're also going to post the meditation alone. You can listen to it on anywhere you listen to podcasts, um, as well as our website weeklyenergyboost.com um anywhere you can anywhere you can find the weekly energy boost want to make sure that you remember also that you can send us a message that you can share like rate and review this episode you can also um dig into our archives this is actually the third time Yehuda has been on weekly energy boost he did an episode in the summer for healing as well. And I'm sure we'll have him back again to share more of the wisdom and tools that he shares so beautifully. So again, let's get comfortable, um, blindfold, ear, ear, earphones. And um, please, I, I really encourage everyone to do this on a regular basis, especially for this week, but to bring the sacred sounds meditations, which you can also learn about on weeklyenergyboost.com, as well as in the show notes so that we can really create a dramatic and powerful shift for ourselves individually and for the world. Take it over, Yehuda. 
Thank you, Elisheva. As far as the structure of the, the meditation, the experience, the first few minutes, we, we use an active meditation using the support of certain frequencies and the sounds to support slowing down our brain waves, entering into a deeper state. We begin using ancient Kabbalistic tools, uh, meditative tools, tools inviting into our space the support of, of souls from above I always invite my guides and the support of the Ark angels we use the divine names certain divine names and using the intention that we set at the beginning I will give you a few minutes then I Of a quiet time just to allow the the energy within the space to continue to do some work internally inside of you and in the end I will count from one to five and I will invite you to take off the blindfold if you use and then to open your eyes here we go As you close your eyes, you begin bringing your attention into your breath, breathing in through your nose. Holding your breath. And exhaling through your mouth as you breathe in. Bring your attention, feel the sensation. As the air enters into your body and as you exhale bring your attention to the air of your mouth have the sensation feel as the air leaves your body through your nose hold your breath slowly slowly exhale through your mouth and think about the number three three times in your head does the number three appear and disappear we're going to to Bring the body into a state of relaxation by scanning the energy within from the top of our head all the way down to our toes, holding one intention, releasing any pressures, any tensions along the way. attention to the top of your head and the space of your crown the keter as we call it in Kabbalah feel in your own way the flow of the energy within this space and slowly move the attention from the crown space to your eyes your eyelids and release any pressures from your eyes moving to your mouth and release any tensions down to the air of your neck your shoulders drop your shoulders and Your hands release any pressure bring your 
attention to the area of your chest. Allow your chest to open at ease. Down to your abdomen. With your mind's eyes. Take a moment to scan your internal organs, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your liver. Release any pressures, any tensions. Move your attention to the area of your upper back, the lower back, the base of your spine, your legs, all the way down to your feet, your toes. And release any tensions, any pressures along the way. Feel how your body becomes lighter and lighter. Feel the energy inside. It flows from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. And now we're taking a deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath. Slowly, slowly, exhale to your mouth. Think about the number two, three times in your head. As the number two appear and disappear. Starting relaxing your mind. The easiest way to relax your mind is to use the capacity and the power of your mind to move, to travel through time and through space. The way you do that, think about a place that makes you feel safe. See yourself in this place right now this place can be from the time of your childhood from the time of the present from any phase of your life journey Your mind, unlike your body at the moment. Your mind can travel through time and space. See yourself in this place. Expand your mind even more. See the details, the objects, the colors even smells. See and feel yourself being there and allow the same feeling that this place gives you, awakens in you. Activated inside of you right now, you feel safe. This state of mind. You can be in few places at the same time. I invite you to join me as we project ourselves 
to the most powerful portal that exists according to the ancient Kabbalist in the city of Jerusalem place known by the name the Holy of Holies the energy center of this universe the most powerful portal which connects between the physical and the spiritual dimensions the energy that is being awakened within this space begins elevating you above the illusion of physicality the illusion of time into the dimension of your soul your soul the divine spark in you the unlimited energy inside of you energy in you which holds the map the direction for your purpose holds the energy and the wisdom to accomplish it as the ancient Kabbalah is teaching us that this portal in the city of Jerusalem the Holy of Holies exist as well within your heart space bring your attention into the space of your heart and feel the energy within this space feel the energy opens up and grows and expands in the space of your heart directing you to connect with much deeper space within yourself much more elevated space and deeper you go and more elevated state you reach the more quiet it becomes the confusion of the external part of reality the noise becomes more and more quiet This space allows the voice of your soul becoming louder and clearer. Take another deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath. And as you're slowly exhaling through your mouth, Think about the number one in your head three times. Does the number one appear and disappear? And allow your mind to enter to even deeper state. Within this deep space, I would like to call in and to invite to ask my guides to come in bring their light, their support and protection to each and every one of us. Open yourself to feel the additional energy coming into your space, surrounding you, protecting you, supporting you. to call in and to invite the support of the Archangels 
באנג'ל מיכאל, באנג'ל גבריאל, באנג'ל אוריאל, באנג'ל רפאל, בהילר. To come in to our space. Open yourself to feel their light. Coming into your space. Their energy, their vibration surrounding you. Envision bright light that shines from above your head. This light begins to move down like a spiral surrounding your physical body and goes all the way six feet around your physical body. It's the light of the Creator. Feel the energy around you. Feel the energy in you. a string of light that comes from the space of your crown down to the space of your heart. Bring your attention to the space of your heart. Envision yourself within the space of your heart. In front of you there is a door will act as a portal to support you entering, teleporting into much deeper space within yourself. We're going to use the divine names of this month as the key to open up this door. mention the sounds which will activate the vibration and we're going to breathe in and out through the sounds of the divine names Yud, breathe in Hey, breathe out up and see and feel yourself walking through this door and you move from one space one dimension into deeper space deeper dimension within your heart within this space there is only light there is only love there is no judgment and In this space there is the energy, the wisdom, the strength that you need to connect, to achieve a new state of freedom. mind from any thought any memory from this lifetime from any other lifetime which is pulling you back 
which is holding you back. Any energy that keeps you living smaller than the life you meant to live. Energy that begins helping you clear anything that is limiting you. Clearing from deep inside of you anything that doesn't serves you in moving in your life into the next phase of activating tapping to the unique light the light that you truly are within this space keep focus on the light within this space as it expands and expands keep focusing on the love within this space keep focusing on your intention to clear anything that makes you live small and allow in a power and a voice in you become louder to expand and keep focusing on your breathing for the next few minutes.
breath in through your nose. Hold your breath and slowly, slowly exhale through your mouth. Direct the energy, the breath into the space deep down inside of your heart. Place your left hand on your heart and the right hand on top of the left making a physical contact with your heart. And feel, feel the energy within this space in you. How powerful, how expensive, how pure. sacred space you guide your healer light with asking this energy to guide these people, these individuals you're sending this light to to help them clear any form energy that keeps them living smaller than the way they meant to live their lives, creating the space within them, giving them the spiritual link to plug in, to connect, to begin to recognize, to know their power divine energy that exists within them, a door to their soul dimension. space and physical body and as you're slowly exhaling through your mouth start to bring the sensation and to feel the energy back in your physical body you 
can slowly move your toes, gently you can roll your shoulders, softly you can move your neck from side to side. physical space then we'll take another minute or two to stay within this quiet space with an intention to ground the energy and to reflect back over your experience one more One more deep breath in through your nose. Hold your breath a bit longer. And exhale with a sigh. And five. You're welcome to take off the blindfold and Slowly open your eyes back into the physical space. Take your time. Using an intention to ground the energy and to reflect back over your experience. Thank you so much for joining our space, bringing your unique light and spark and energy 